Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. My name is DRL. We are here with some NBA 2K Mobile. In today's video, we will be discussing the franchise team players. We will be breaking down the stats. So now let's get into the video topics. And for those of you who have never seen my breakdown videos, I'll go over the topics that we discuss. So in this theme stats breakdown video, we discuss the new theme players, the strengths, weaknesses, with, along with some build suggestions. We rank players by position. We discuss the top players to craft, the top overall players for the theme, and the top theme team. Now that you understand what the video will be about, let me explain exactly how I come up with my stat averages. So let's break down how we compile the stat average. We look at all the stats available inside the game for each player. So we take a look at shoot off dribble, which is making shots while on the move. Layups and dunks, which is making baskets at the rim. Mid-range shooting, which is making shots from inside the perimeter. Three-point shot, which is landing shots from outside the perimeter. Post scoring, which is offense from close in. Agility, which is run speed and jumping. Strength, which is physical power. Rebounding, which is getting rebounds on offense and defense. Playmaking, which is accurate passes and knowing when to pass. And last but not least, defending, which is coverage, blocking, and stealing. So we compile all those stats and we come up with a formula that gives us a number, which is the overall stat average. And that is how the players are ranked. Now that we explained everything about this video, let's get into the details. All right, so here's the franchise collection. We're gonna start off with the franchise point guards. So out of the point guards, we're gonna rank them based off their overall stat average. So right now, the lowest point guard for the Steam and let's filter this by point guard so you guys can see. Will be Emerald John Wall. So Emerald John Wall, basically his area of opportunity is post scoring, strength and rebounding, coming in at a two and a three. Aside from that, his strengths is playmaking, agility, all coming in at a five. Now, personally, I'm, I'm big on John Wall. I'm using him as my onyx. I think he's super fast, very agile, very crafty with the layups, really good handle. So if you do get him, he is a very good point guard to have. Uh, this happens to be a very good theme with point guards. So if you do get him, it's not the end of the world. And you can have a lot of fun with his build. Amethyst Damian Lillard coming in at a 3.8 overall. John Wall was a 3.7. Damian Lillard's area of opportunity is post scoring, which is a 1. Strength, which is a 3. Rebounding at a 2. And defending at a 3. So he's fairly low in some important categories, like uh, defending but he's really good in a bunch of other categories. So he has a five in shoot off dribble, five in mid range shooting, five in three point shot, five in agility and five in playmaking. So again, Damian Lillard is another Onyx player that I use. His stats are incredible if you can ignore the fact that he's not gonna do post scoring, which you really don't need your point guard to do that. And he's not gonna grab a lot of rebounds. And this is kind of the same sentiment. You don't need your point guard to really grab rebounds. So if you can boost up his defending, he'll be very solid overall. And Damian Lillard could be crafted, so that's another advantage as well. And now the best point guard for this team is Stephen Curry, coming at a 3.9 overall. Steph's area of opportunity is layups and dunks, which is a 3. Post scoring at a 2, strength at a 2, and rebounding at a 3. Aside from that, he's got a 5 in shoot-off dribble, mid-range shooting, agility, and playmaking. So Steph is very, very good. If you don't mind him not dunking, then you can focus on his other areas. You can boost up defending or you can boost up rebounding a bit. But again, rebounding and post scoring is not big for me. Layups and dunks is huge for me because I like to drive and either get a pass out or get an easy dunk or layup. So if I was building out a Steph Curry build, I would focus on layups and dunks and defending because everything else is pretty solid. Unless you really want to max out the three point shot, but Curry's release and form is so sweet in this game. It's not hard to really nail those shots down. And guess what? Steph Curry is craftable as well. Now let's get into the shooting guards. All right, so for the shooting guards, and we'll filter this out as well. The lowest is Gold Bradley Bill. He comes at a 3.7 overall. And I got to admit, this theme, it's not star-studded, right, with super high overall stat average players. However, it's very balanced in my opinion. So Bradley Bill comes at a 3.7. He is craftable. His area of opportunities is layups and dunks. Post scoring, 
strength and defending. Very similar to a Damian Lillard in a sense. Now, for post scoring, you don't need for a shooting guard as much. Neither do you need rebounding, but the defending is a big thing. The steals is big for a shooting guard, but he has a five and shoot off dribble, five and mid range shooting, five and three point shot, and a five and agility. So those categories are very solid. So if you can boost up Bradley Beal's rebounding and layups and dunks, then we're not rebounding. His defending and layups and dunks, like we did with Steph Curry, he'll be very complete. And he is craftable, so it's a great player for newer 2K mobile players to come on and craft. I just grind the event. You should be able to get one collectible right away, either by ranking on a leaderboard or by completing either the second tier of the event. And then you can cr create this Bradley build to help you get more style points. Next, you got Sapphire Clay Thompson. It's nice to see another Clay coming at 3.8 overall. Clay's trap. Clay is craftable as well. His area of opportunity is rebounding, which is a two, strength three, post scoring three, and layups and dunk three as well. But he has a five and shoot off dribble, five and mid range shooting, five and three point shot. So just like Bradley Bill, you could focus on layups and dunks, um, along with bringing up Clay's defense, because Clay really should be higher in defense. I'm not sure why he's a four. In my opinion, he's one of the best defending shooting guards in the game. So that's something you can boost up as well. And then you have Joe Dumars Onyx coming at a 3.9 overall. So he's a step above Klay Thompson as far as stats. Right? He still has three in layups and dunks. He has a one in rebounding and a two in post scoring. However, he has a five in defending, a five in playmaking, five in three point shot, five in mid range shooting, and a five in shoot off dribble. So all three of these shooting guards could definitely score. What I like about Joe Dumars, aside from the fact that he's Onyx, is that his playmaking and defending is a five. So it makes it a lot easier when creating your builds because now you can just focus on maximizing his shooting or you can bring up mid-range or you can bring up his layups and dunks. All right, so now let's go into small forwards. So for the small forwards, there's only two in the theme. The lowest overall is 4.2 and that's Onyx John Havlicek. He basically has a four and five in every category except post scoring, which is a three. Again, that's not a biggie for small forwards. That's more for big men. So aside from that, you can really do a lot with his build. Uh, he also has a two in rebounding. I just realized that. So what I would do with his build is up to you. Are you going to completely forget about rebounding for your small forward? Or are you going to try to boost it up? You can bring up rebounding. Most likely the gears that boost up rebounding also bring up defending and strength so that can really help you out with his build and it might even bring up post scoring as well now if you don't want to go that route then you have to go full offense and boost up mid-range shooting and three-point shot which will still work out for you so again uh Havlicek has a lot of options with his build he's a solid small forward too and then the best small forward for this team you know how i feel about elgin baylor you got the big three in the game elgin baylor lebron james and west unseld so if you get any of those three across any rarity, you're in good shape. So again, 4.8 overall, five in everything except three-point shot and layups and dunks. So you can really do whatever you want with this build. He's so complete, very solid player. Let's get into the power forwards. All right, so the five, for the power forwards, there's a lot of them in this theme. The lowest is Gold Udonis Haslam. Has a 3.6 overall, he is craftable area of opportunity is three point shot which is a one and then he has a two in playmaking and a bunch of threes he's got three in defending agility and shoot off dribble but Haslam's never really been a scorer he's been a great rebounding and defender so if you can focus on bringing up his defense and bring, make it a five and also work on bringing up his agility to make him a little bit faster on the court that will help out his build because he already has a five in rebounding he already has a five in post score and he has a five in mid-range shooting. So he can play a very good role similar to Cameron Garnett if you build him out the right way. Next, you got Emerald Tim Duncan coming in at 3.7. I don't know. It's a little disrespectful because Tim Duncan is one of the greatest power forwards ever. But I understand the stats, right? Because Tim didn't really do these things. His shootout dribble is a three. His mid-range shooting is a three. So I think that could be a little bit higher. Three-point shot is a two. 
Agility is a three and playmaking is a two. And I also think playmaking could be higher. Now he has a five in defending, five in rebounding, five in straight, five in post scoring. So if I was to build out Tim Duncan, I would go with the route that focuses on playmaking and mid-range shooting. If you can bring up those two categories and there's gears that have those abilities together, you'll be in great shape with Tim Duncan. He will be a monster because you don't need him to shoot off dribble. Uh, if you can also somehow bring up agility, it'll be even better for you. And you also don't need Tim Duncan shooting threes. Then you have Amethyst Kevin McHale coming at 3.9 overall. He is craftable. Kevin McHale, similar to Tim Duncan, three in shoot off dribble, two in three point shot, three in agility and three in playmaking. He's got a five in defending, five in rebounding, five in straight, five in post scoring. So then point categories, monster, right? So if you can boost up for him, I would probably do agility and playmaking. He would be pretty complete. And if you could do mid range shooting, even better. And then the top overall power forward for this team is Draymond Green coming out of 4.1. He is craftable. Draymond is pretty, pretty good, right? He only has a three and shoot off dribble, which is something you don't need your power forwards doing. But he has a four and everything else, along with a five in strength and a five in defending. So Draymond is very complete. This build will be based off your play style. If you want him to be inside, then boost up layups and dunks, and maybe a post scoring and agility. If you want him to grab more rebounds, obviously you boost that up. Um, he can be a playmaker at a four. You don't need to really change that. His three-point shot in mid-range is four apiece. So maybe boost up three-point shot in mid-range to make him more of a complete scorer. It's not really Draymond's green, but he couldn't do it, right? So that's some options there. Again, Draymond is pretty solid. And one of the hidden gems, right? Because he's across every rarity almost. So he's a good player to build your team around. All right, so now let's get into the centers. All right, for your centers... You guys kind of already know. If you follow me on Twitter, you know who I'm excited about. So you got Gold Trishan Thompson coming at 3.1 overall. He is craftable. Uh, Trishan is a lot of work. I'll be honest with you. Uh, he has a two in shoot off dribble, two in mid range shooting, one in three point shot, two in playmaking. Now this team was based mainly on players that had a great career with one team. So I understand why they have Trishan. But um, he, it's just too much to do with his build. There's other players that I think will be more worth using your collectibles on. So there's always that one player that you could just really decide not to craft. But if you need a center and you're starting off in the game, then I understand the need, right? But for him, you kind of have to understand that he's not going to be scoring for you. His categories are too low to even try to develop. So if I were you, focus on his strengths, which will be defending rebounding and post scoring and just have him be an inside monster and lay up some dunks all right so now let's get into the next card which is ruby bill russell coming out of four overall he's craftable as well bill russell the reason why his rating is so low is because three-point shots weren't a thing for big men back then uh this is also the same case that happened with shaquille o'neal kareem abdul jabbar so they have a one and three-point shot and a two mid-range shooter, right? He wasn't a shooter. It just wasn't his thing. But if you see, he has a five in layups and dunks. He has a five in post scoring, five in agility, five in strength, five in rebound, and five in defending. So he's a monster in the most important categories for a center. Just build on those. That's honestly what I would do with Bill Russell. And he will be probably the best center in the game, like one of. So you can really just maximize strength from rebounding and defending. Make him similar to Ben Wallace and Dennis Rodman. Then you got Sapphire David Robinson coming out of 4.1. He's craftable too. Same case like Bill Russell. Um, only thing is with David Robinson, you have a little more options for growth, right? Because he has a three in playmaking. He has a four in agility, four in mid-range, and four in layups and dunks. So you can build off those categories because he already has a five in defending, a five in rebounding, and a five in strength because he is one of the strongest players in the NBA ever and a five in post scoring. So you can boost up those other areas and just make them more well-rounded. And then here goes one of the big three in the game. There's not much you can do with his build except make it almost perfect, right? So there's a 4.8 overall Onyx West Unselled. I was excited about him in the 2023 with the Amethyst version. 
So now that there's an Onyx version, oh my goodness. This is like somebody you need to have on your team. He has a five in everything, except shoot off dribble, which is a three. And you know what? Who cares about shoot off dribble for a center? You can make almost all his categories six or seven. Like you can have so much fun with his build. He is going to dominate. He is a beast. Capital B. No lie. All right, so now that we broke down all the positions, let's get into the top players. All right, so let's clear this out and show everybody. All right, so the top players overall, we're going to rank them from lowest to highest, obviously. You got Sapphire David Robinson, Emerald Draymond Green, Onyx John Havlicek, Ruby Elgin Baylor, and Onyx West Unsell. Now the top craftable players. The bottom, Ruby Steph Curry. Amethyst Kevin McHale. Ruby Bill Russell. Sapphire David Robinson. And Emerald Draymond Green. And then the team, if you were to assemble a team with all the theme players, we're going to go with the point guard, Ruby Steph Curry. Shooting guard is going to be Onyx Joe Dumas, right? Let's get it right. Show some respect. Ruby Elgin Bela at small forward. Emil Drimmel Green at power forward. And in the center, you already know, it's going to be Onyx West Unsell. So that is it, folks. We broke down the entire theme. We broke down each position, told you who the best players were, the best players overall, the best team to assemble, the best players to craft. I think we just talked about everything in this theme. And like always, we broke down the stats. We gave you a build suggestion for each player. And that's pretty much it. So again, thanks for the support. Appreciate it. Peace out.